So if you wanted to know if there's going to be a recording, there's a recording because I'm recording. Okay, so welcome to the um, welcome to the workshop. So let's see how I okay. So this workshop tonight is for you if if you're open to a new perspective your doctor is, has never given you. If you want to learn more about the root cause and how to treat it. If you're sick of going the medical route and not getting results with it, and if you're open to making long-term changes to your diet and lifestyle in order to get results. Tonight is not for you. If you're closed-minded about new information um, that may conflict with what you've been told, if you want to stay on prescription medications for life, if those are working for you and you don't want to get off them, stay on them. Uh, if you're looking for some kind of quick picks, quick fix pill, powder, or potion, it's probably not for you tonight. Uh, if you're against making changes the way you live in order to get healthier, changing your diet, changing your lifestyle, if you're like, Psh, I don't want to do that, this 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 Zoom's not for you. This uh, workshop's not for you. So I'll save you the time. You can, you can sign off. Um, I do not have some you know magic pill or powder behind door number three. So um, what we're going to cover tonight, all right, the story behind autoimmune disease, where it comes from and what causes it for real. Uh, why the mainstream medical community has such a hard time both treating it and even diagnosing it. And then we're going to talk about probably the thing y'all came here for, most excited about, is how to actually heal. And um, based on real stories of myself and some of my students who are on this call. And then um, if that's if that's for you, there'll be an opportunity to go deeper at the end. So let's get started. Who is Dr. Ben? Um, and I actually had a medical doctor who, who downloaded my smoothie guide a couple of weeks ago and started doing it and started feeling a lot better. He's like, man, I got to talk to you. I got to know your story. Like, how did you, how did you invent this? You know? And, uh, I, I hate to, I hate to take credit for other people's work. Um, but basically a little bit about me, um, I, the picture on the left is me in 2010 and I was working at an, in, as an engineer at a microchip company called Silicon Labs. We had a swank office right along the Colorado River there in downtown Austin, Texas. That's what you're seeing. There's the Colorado River. And then, then there's my office on that top floor it was me. I had an awesome job um, at a very successful company that I absolutely hated. And, um, and uh, around 2010, I started to develop health problems. I was 28 years old. and um, and uh, it started kind of simple, like uh, just would notice like meals that I ate would um, would, uh, you know, not digest the best. Right. And I'd have some like indigestion and uh, slowly over the course of about six to ten months that escalated to where every meal I was eating, my stomach would hurt. OK, I started to develop muscle soreness, muscle pain, pretty much chronic constant all the time, like a low level three out of 10, my body just hurt all the time. And, um, and I, uh, I started to develop weird eczema on my hand. Um, and, uh, and started to deal with um, a lot of brain fog, a lot of difficulty remembering things, the work became difficult. Um, and then just a ton of fatigue where I was knocking back like two, three monster energy drinks a day just to just get through life. Anybody else go through that? Just type me in the chat. Um, and so, you know, being the red blooded American dude that I was, what I did was I just put off doing anything about it. And anybody, anybody uh, resonate with that? And um, eventually it just got so bad. Like it got so bad or, you know, every meal I ate was causing me pain. Like I was, my muscles were sore all the time. I had no energy on the weekends. I would just sleep. Like I would just like work during the week and kind of maintain. And then the weekends just crash and no energy, just completely laid up. And uh, it, it got really to that point where I was like, could barely function in life. I was like, you know, maybe I should go see a doctor. And um, let me tell you that that was not the experience I anticipated. Uh, anybody else go through this, right? Like you think you're going to show up at the doctor with problems X, Y, and Z, and they're just going to give you drugs A, B, and C. And then, you know, you're cured and you move on. And um, I quickly found out that that was not how it works, right? You come to them with disease problems, X, Y, and Z, and they got to diagnose you 
they got to send you, okay, well, X goes to this specialist and Y goes to that specialist and Z goes to this specialist. And now I'm seeing like, you know, a gastroenterologist from my stomach. I'm seeing a rheumatologist from my muscles. I'm seeing a um, dermatologist from my eczema. And like the list just keeps exploding. And each one of these guys is like running his own tests, trying to figure out what's going on. And mostly I'm getting, we don't know what's wrong with you. Anybody else get that a lot? Go to a bunch of different doctors and they run all your labs and they say, we don't know what's wrong with you, right? Um, so if that's you, just type me in the chat because uh, that was me in 2010. And, um, and you know, luckily I had health insurance, right? So all this was pretty much covered. Um, but, uh, and I thought, oh, okay, oh, I'm going to the dermatologist. Like this guy's, oh, this dermatologist can't figure out. They're in front of me like the special dermatologist who's really good at this stuff. Like, ooh, I get to go see the special guy, right? But I quickly realized that none of these people had a clue. And they, 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 they all just sort of, they either acted like they couldn't figure it out or they tried to tell me it was all in my head because it didn't show up on the lab work, it didn't show up on the test, it didn't show up on whatever they were looking for. Um, and so, you know, they put me on a few different medications for like my skin and my stomach and all of that. And uh, none of it really helped much. In fact, like there were a lot of side effects. Um, and um, I just, uh, I, I wasn't really getting any better. And, uh, and so eventually I started like, and I never got a diagnosis, what was going on. Anybody never get a diagnosis? Anybody really resonate with this story? Um, and uh, of course, you know, it's like, once you get the diagnosis, once they know the name of the disease, then they can just present the cure. Well, often it doesn't work that way either. So eventually this is going on and I'm just getting worse. And I'm like, I got to figure something else out. And so I just start researching and reading and trying to like look up these symptoms and, you know, WebMD was just kind of starting off as a thing back then. And that's not really helping me. And I'm just reading stuff about digestive issues and eczema. And, you know, you know, I come across information that will say, say, Hey, like, you know, all these problems would go away if, you know, you just ate better. And I was like, Psh, not doing that. You kidding me. Right. Like I'm thin. I look, look at the picture on the left. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm good. You know, I, I had a woman, today on a call with me, telling me that aside from her ulcerative colitis, chronic pain, uh, inability to walk, and um, constant blood sugar issues, and headaches, and bone pain, she was perfectly healthy, right? Just other than that, <laughs> you know? Um, no, that's not how it works. Uh, you you got a host of disease conditions, you, you, you don't have health. Um, so anyway, but you know, the, the um, the 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 health conditions kept getting worse and the doctors just seemed to just give me the runaround. Like there's more and more appointments, more and more tests. We can't figure out what's wrong. Dude. Let's try this drug experimentally. And I'm realizing these guys like are never going to figure it out, right? Like no one's going to come along and be like, Ben, um, we found the problem. It's called this. And here's the solution. Like I was realizing that just the bureaucracy and red tape, that that was you know, a lot of people hold out hope for that kind of thing, but I kind of realized after, you know, six months of this, that that was not in the cards. That was not going to happen. So, um, so I kind of reluctantly made changes to my diet. because so I was reading that that maybe could help and nothing else had worked. So it was like, I was kind of painted into a corner of like, okay, I'm going to do this. Right. And, and I really didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have any like nutrition knowledge. I was just like, let's find things that don't make my stomach hurt. And, uh, and so in the beginning, I was just like buying like the gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, fun-free versions of like the macaroni and cheese and the pizza and all the crap I was eating. And let me tell you, it didn't taste good. And uh, it was expensive. And I, I didn't honestly feel, I felt like 10% better. And I was like, man, I got to drive all the way to the other side of town to double my grocery bill, to eat a bunch of food that tastes like cardboard. And I'm feeling better. like, what the hell? So um, then I get this idea of like, okay, I don't want to learn to cook, you know, but um, I, I'm more of like a microwave dude. But like, if I heard fruits and vegetables are supposed to be healthy for you. So if I like, you know, maybe put those in a, like in a blender, because that's like a microwave, right? Like you just kind of open the door and then you throw the food in and then you close the door and then you hit a button. And then a minute later, food's ready. I was like, I can, I can do that. And that was kind of like the, the incidental beginning of my wellness journey was just like, I just kind of backdoored into it. because I was just trying to, oh, like fruits and I heard fruits and vegetables was like good for you or something. It's literally like 
my um, my uh, my strategy at that point. Uh, so we'll get more into that later. Um, what is uh, autoimmune disease? So uh, and and people will debate this and say, oh, it's not really that. You know, it's 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 not that it doesn't really exist. Whatever. For the sake of tonight, an autoimmune disease, auto meaning self, and immune being the system that fights disease, that system ends up fighting the self by mistake. Okay, the immune system that's supposed to fight the germs and the COVID and the, oh wait, can I say that? Oh yeah, we're on Zoom, it's okay. Um, uh, fights, fights your body. And, um, and, so the, and so it's estimated that about 25 to 50 million Americans have it. And this estimation was like several years ago. Now I hear it's like one in four Americans, not one in seven. And the thing is like, you're not hearing a lot about it um, because people aren't dying from it, right? There's not a body count, but people are suffering, okay? And, um, and so basically, and, and so really there's a bunch of different diseases. There's like, you know, ankylosing spondylitis, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, all these things have different names, but it's really the same phenomenon. It's the, it's the immune system attacking a certain part of the body and then based on what part of the body it attacks is where you have the symptoms and what they call the disease, right? So in, in, in rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system attacks the joints. In Hashimoto's disease, the immune system attacks the thyroid. One, one gives you joint pain, the other gives you like fatigue and, and dry skin and waking. Um, but it's just what organ it ends up being affected. Um, so what are the common symptoms? If you're on here and you're like, man, I, I think I have autoimmune disease, but I haven't been to a doctor or I haven't been diagnosed or they're having trouble figuring out what's going on with me. Um, most common symptoms, number one, brain fog. Number two, fatigue. Number three, some kind of chronic pain, usually muscle or joint pain, but maybe it's like a endometriosis and it's like a uterus pain, but there's there's some kind of chronic pain in some part of the body. Almost always digestive issues and usually some kind of sensitivity, whether that's to heat, cold, to food, to uh, chemicals, different smells, um, a whole whole host of other things. Um, sometimes sensitivities to emotions, right? Where are my empaths in the room? Please say, say me in the chat. Okay. And so this is really the front end, right? Like this is like what people are suffering with, right? Um, but like, let's take it a, a step deeper, right? What's, what's beyond that, right? Here's what we really go through, right? Is, is having an invisible disease. If someone has rheumatoid arthritis or ulcerative colitis, um, we'll get to questions at the end. Um, sorry. Um, if someone is, um, is dealing with this, um, there's no outward looking symptoms. You can't look at someone and say, oh, that person has ulcerative colitis. Oh, that person has chronic fatigue syndrome, right? Like you can't tell by looking at them. And so a lot of times you get treated as if nothing's wrong with you or you're faking, right? And oftentimes your friends, your family, um, sometimes even like your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, husband, wife, partner, whatever, doesn't even get it. They think that like you're faking it or like you're, you're, um, like exacerbating it or like uh, what we call malingering, like making it that to be worse than it really is, right? And people don't understand. And so it, it, it becomes very alienating because you're like, man, people really think nothing's wrong with me, right? Or my doctor thinks nothing's wrong with me. Or I know something is, but I'm kind of going crazy because everybody treats me like I must be making it up, but I know that I'm not. So if that's you, type me in the chat. Um, feeling like your body is in control of you instead of you being in control of it. It's like, oh, I want to go out and, you know, have like hang out with the girls on Friday night. But then, you know, I just didn't feel up to even leaving the house. So I had to cancel plans because it's like, it's all ready to do it. But then last minute body was like, nope, nope, you're not right. And then you don't have control of your body anymore. It kind of dictates your, your schedule and your activities. Um, you can't show up hundred percent for the things you care about, like your friends, your family, your kids, your job your partner, your, your passions, your business, your hobbies, right? You just can't, you can't give it your all even though you want to. And, and, and also just feeling like you're stuck like this, right? Like feeling like, well, the doctors just changed my medication again, but I'm still not any better. And they tell me there's no cure. And they tell me, don't listen to 
crazy wackos like Dr. Ben who say to eat fruits and vegetables because they're wrong and I just got to keep being stuck like this, right? Um, I can remember that feeling, right? When I was just getting the runaround from doctors being like, am I ever going to get any better? Um, and so so what causes autoimmune disease? Like what, what is the cause, right? That's what I get asked all the time. And so most doctors and scientists and kind of the mainstream medical realm will say one of two things. They'll say it's unknown or it's quote unquote genetic, right? As if like, you know, it used to be one in 10,000 50 years ago. Now it's one in four because the genes have changed. It's 10,000 times more prevalent because the genes have changed. Really, <laughs> really, right? Like something's going on, right? And, um, you know, if it were genetic, the prevalence would have stayed about the same, but it's not, right? And so the answer really is that they don't know and um, they don't want to look at what it is because if it's not caused by a microbe, a virus or bacteria, they don't really have a way to treat it. And they kind of would just rather stuff it under the rug is not a problem, right? So here's what we do know. Um, trauma and extreme stressors and exposure to environmental toxins. And we'll get into both of those uh, here. So, um, so let's see, exposure to environmental toxins, all right? In some parts of the world, there's this practice where they actually will um, put toxins in your body in order to shock your body into fighting disease, right? Crazy, right? <laughs> like, it, you know, it's like, middle ages type stuff. Um, but the truth is that uh, this practice is actually alive and well today in many parts of the world, including the United States, Canada, it's called vaccination, okay? Where we, we inject you with something toxic to try to shock your immune system into fighting it, right? Um, kind of a problem with that. Drugs have side effects, right? And if we're, if we're giving you a drug that affects your immune system and that has side effects, your immune system might do something it's not supposed to do, like attack you, oh, right? And then we look at the data of the Gardasil vaccine and we see that 2.3% of people who took all three shots developed an autoimmune disease. What? Heavens no. It wouldn't be hiding in plain sight in the scientific data. It is. Page nine, go on the FDA website, download the, the, um, the insert for the Gardasil vaccine. It's there. 35 incidents of, of hypothyroidism, uh, arthralgia, arthritis, arthropathy, joint pain, um, psoriasis, multiple sclerosis, okay? It's, it's in there. It's in the data that, that um, they caused this. I never really wanted to be, um, this was not something that I wanted to know. I was just trying to find the cause of autoimmune disease, and I kept stumbling into vaccine studies where people would get them as side effects. That was kind of weird, right? <laughs> Then I tried to warn everybody when the when the new ones came out, the, the COVID shots. Nobody listened, right? And now they're showing up in my office of like, well, you know, I used to have one autoimmune disease and it was pretty mild. Now I got five, you know, it, it kind of happened after that third shot. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Well, anyway, it's kind of too late now. Anyway, it's like, that's the cause. If you got it, you're, you got to figure out a way. Um, stress and trauma can exacerbate an autoimmune condition. Anybody here? ever go through a particularly stressful time in their life, like, um, I don't know, uh, losing a job, losing a loved one, going through a, a divorce, um, going through some kind of tough scenario, failing out of school, and um, and their autoimmune disease either got way worse or that's when it started. Anybody? Type me in the chat. Okay, I wish I could read the chat and be on on this mode at the same time. Okay, so those are the causes, right? Those are what we know about the cause, but honestly, it it, it doesn't help, right? Because it's like, okay, that's cool, but you know, then what, right? Um, so here's why modern medicine has a really hard time, right? With, with autoimmune disease, because, because most diseases affect one part of the body, one part, right? Like, and so like, if you've got heart disease, you go to the cardiologist. And if you've got kidney disease, you go to the nephrologist. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? But uh, an autoimmune disease can affect multiple organ systems, right? For me, it was affecting my skin, my digestion, and my muscles, right? And my brain. Um, and so each one of those had a different specialty, right? If you've got lupus, you got skin issues, going to the dermatologist. You got joint issues, going to the rheumatologist. 
you got uh, fatigue, you might be going to the endocrinologist, right? And so, and so each doctor is just kind of looking at his one part of the body and running his tests on that and doesn't really care what is going on. No one's looking at the big picture. And if their drug helps the symptoms for what they're looking at, but causes symptoms somewhere else, well, hey, that's not my problem, dude. <laughs> you know, this, this, um, this uh, heart drug is probably causing, probably causing problems with your kidneys. Well, you got to go see the kidney doctor. I don't deal with that, right? And then that doctor's going to put you on drugs for the kidney stuff that's going to affect your liver. And then you got to go to the internal medicine guy and, and it becomes like this zigzag whack-a-mole game. It's not too fun, right? But this is the medical model, right? You got, you got your two strategies. You got surgery, right? Like Uncle Joey, right? From Full House. You guys watch that show? Cut it out, guys, right? Like gallbladder's not working? Cut it out, okay? Um, you know, uh, appendix isn't working? Cut it out, okay? Like that's, you know, kidneys having problems? Cut it out. But the problem with that is like, you kind of need your organs are called vital organs for a reason. <laughs> They're vital to you staying alive. So it's not really the best option to like cut your colon out, right? Like you want to avoid that if you can, like it's, you know, um, like it's health people not have pain and not have problems, but like, then you got another set of problems, not having a colon. Right. But that's, that's the mainstream medical approach. It's just like, if it's not working, cut it out. Okay. And then drugs, right. Um, which, uh, you know, I wish they were a cure, but I think you guys know, you know, some of the problems with these drugs, right, is that, like, they're not really a cure per se, like, the symptoms may get better, um, but they don't, like, fully fix the problem most of the time. Um, drugs may do this thing, anybody have this, where it makes the lab work look normal, like, they put you on thyroid medications, and you don't feel any better, but then they go do your labs again, and they go, oh, look, your blood work is normal, right, we made the number on the paper change, to a, to a good number, but you don't feel any different. But now there's nothing we can do for you because the number on the paper looks good. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, good job. Um, side effects, right? A lot of these drugs are immune suppressive, right? Your immune system's attacking your, your joints. Let's put you on a drug to suppress your immune system. But guess what? You kind of need that immune system, right? And there's a, there's a, there was a pandemic going on. <laughs> you know, and millions of people are on immune suppressive drugs might have been a problem, right? Might have, might have, might have been a problem. And here's the thing. It's like, it, it, if you're on this long enough, right? Not only does it make you get sick more often, but that immune system also fights cancer too. And like, it's in the side effects of the drug. That on a long enough timeline, you may get cancer because your immune system can't fight it off, right? Here's another thing. A lot of these biologic drugs, the Humira, Actamera, Enbrel, Remicade, all this stuff, is that they work for a little while and then boom, they just stop working, right? And then they're like, oh, okay, Enbrel's not working anymore. Well, let's put you on Humira. Okay. After 12 months on Humira, it's not working. We got to put you on, we'll put you on Remicade. We'll put you on Tults, right? And it becomes this like merry-go-round where you got, you got to switch drugs all the time and, you, you know, you, different side effects, different, you know, positive effects. It's, you're all over the map. And they're just like playing a guessing game, right? Whether they're like, well, let's try this one, herb to dur, right? Like they don't really have an answer. Um, and this stuff's expensive. One year of Remicade out of pocket's 85,000, right? It's a lot, that's a lot of money, <laughs> right? Um, okay, so why do doctors do this? Why do they do this stuff if it's such a cluster? Excuse my language. Um, here's the number one thing. Medical school only teaches drugs and surgery right? That's like all they, the, the skill set they give them. And like, you know, natural approaches are vilified, laughed at, marginalized. I mean, you saw during the, during the last three years, if you wanted to do anything natural, it was like, they wanted to like, you, you want to give vitamin C to people with COVID? Like, oh my God, they could die. But, but, but no, don't give them vitamin C. That would be bad. Um, you know, like really brainwashed and believing that like this stuff is like eating fruits and vegetables is like bad for you. Um, and typically in medical school, they don't get any nutrition education. In fact, they tried to pass a law in California that said they get need five hours. And the law didn't pass because people said it wouldn't be a good time. Literally five hours and four years of medical school are too much nutrition. They got to learn about Humira and Remicade, cutting people's organs out. That's more important, right? Here's the other thing. Pharmaceutical companies make a lot of money. You probably noticed that in the past few years with like Pfizer stock, like, you know, tens of billions of dollars, right? 
Humira before the before the COVID jabs came along was the most lucrative drug ever made in the history of everything. Um, and then here's the other good news for pharma is that like if you're on immune suppressant like Humira, Remicade, Enbrel, Taltz, whatever, Cosentix, uh, you got a suppressed immune system. That means you're going to get more diseases, right? That means that they're going to have more drugs they can give you, right? Mo money, mo problems, or more problems, more money, right? Is the how it works in the pharmaceutical world. <laughs> I just invented that. I'm sure someone said it before, but it's like more problems, more money. <laughs> it's like we give you a drug that causes problems. You got more problems. Now that's more money for us because that's more drugs. Um, anybody here ever been on more than five medications at once? Like I, I, I just had someone come into my office, long COVID. She's on 12 drugs. Not any better. Wonder why. All right. And of course, I mentioned you look at what happened on during COVID top down authoritarian system where doctors were punished for stepping out or speaking out. So someone like me, if I were a medical doctor, they would be like coming after me for saying, eat your fruits and vegetables, guys, you might be able to heal. <laughs> OK, so I want to do a little case study. I want to share um, uh, someone who. Let's see, I think you know what I'm gonna hold off on that. Okay, um, so that is the medical model, right? It's it's a it's a suppress disease model. It's a fight disease model. Okay, it's like you got the disease, we're gonna fight it with a drug. Okay, you got a symptom, you know, we're gonna suppress it, right? Um, that's where they don't look at the root cause; they look at suppressing the symptom, right? And they want to fight the disease, fight your, the, you're an autoimmune warrior, you're, you're a RA warrior, an MS warrior, you're fighting, 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 right? Sounds good. Sounds cool, right? Uh, you go to war every day. Let's look at some of the wars that we fought, right? The war on cancer started in the 70s. Well, now cancer is the number two cause of death in the country. Uh, it's fighting heart disease to take the number one spot, not quite there, but it's close. Uh, the war on drugs, right? Um, started in the 1980s, Nancy Reagan, right? Now it's like we got more drug overdose deaths than ever. We got Americans on more pharmaceutical drugs than ever. We started a war on drugs and now the drugs have won. Just like the cancers won the war on cancer. Fought the war on terror, we got more of that than ever, right? It's this crazy idea, right? That what you resist persists. What you fight, you make more of. Nietzsche said, he who fights with monsters must do his best not to become a monster for as you stare into the abyss, so doth the abyss stare back unto you. You fight disease, you focused on disease, and then you get more disease, right? But here's a crazy model. Instead of fighting disease, you do something called create health. It's the opposite, right? Instead of focusing on the disease, focus on you and your body and getting it the healthiest it can be because it can actually fight disease. Crazy idea, right? That like we could fight disease on our own without drugs. But think about it. If you cut your hand, right? If you cut your hand, you get a cut on your hand, it heals, right? Um, but if you rub dirt and rocks and stuff in the wound, like what happens? Right? It it um it, it it's slower to heal, right? It it like takes time, right? And if you keep messing with it and picking the scab, it's gonna be a really slow time to heal. It may never heal if you really keep messing with it. But um, otherwise, if you put on a, a bandage, um, if you put on a bandage, the body heals underneath, right? And you never go, oh, wow, thanks, bandage, for healing me, right? No, right? You pick off the bandage and you're like, okay, that's cool. My hand healed itself, right? What did the bandage do? Type in the chat. Did the bandage have any healing properties? What do you guys think? No, it didn't have it. It did, it did nothing, right? It didn't have any healing properties. But what the bandage, yes, it prevented dirt from getting in the cut, right? And so what it did was it removed the barriers to healing. This is like the most important thing I could teach, right? It covers it, right? But it keeps the dirt out. It keeps the infectious agents out. Like, Think about the same way, eating a healthier diet keeps the crap food from going in your body, right? Like if you remove the obstructions to healing, 
remove the things that are going to inhibit the body's self-healing mechanisms, like crap getting in your your um, your cut, the body's going to heal. Well, here's the big leap I want you guys to make. If you do the same thing for an autoimmune disease, you can heal it. And now you're probably thinking, okay, Dr. Ben, I got to cover myself in bandages. That's why I've been for the last 35 minutes. That's what I'm listening to. No, but you give your body the ultimate things to heal itself, the ultimate conditions, right? The best conditions, the best food, the most amount of sleep, exercise, all the things that it needs. It's capable of miracles, but most people don't do that. They're, they're killing themselves three meals a day plus, right? Plus, plus not sleeping, plus consuming toxic information on TV and social media and all that. Um, but the body has the capacity to heal itself. I want to share one of those stories. Um, so we've got, um, we've got uh, one of my favorite success stories. Ramsina, are you on the line today? Let's see, we might need to unmute you. Okay, is she here? Hello. Hey, Hi. there you are. Yes. Would love for you to share your story. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, it's an absolute honor to share my story. So um, my story uh, begins about actually June, two years ago, 2021. Um, I uh, came doctor, to Dr. Ben at the time simply because I had run out of hope and I was only getting worse and worse. Dr. Ben wants me to tell you all exactly what I was dealing with. So without further ado, here we go. Um, <laughs> I had multiple things going on with me at the time, a lot. I, um, I, have, I, I was told I have celiac. I have eczema. I had uh, my mesenteric notes were inflamed. Uh, I had fatty liver. I had numerous, because apparently they couldn't count them, whatever. I had numerous gallbladder stones. I mean, that gallbladder had to come out like immediately, like you can't wait. Okay, so got that. I had gallbladder stones. Um, I, my, um, spleen was also inflamed. Uh, in addition to that, I had, uh, I, I had, I have fibromyalgia. I had debilitating migraines. Um, I had, um, I was dealing with, uh, so that's just those parts. Now let's get to my digestive tract issues. It got to the point where I would just literally throw up when I would eat uh, because um, the food that I was eating was not getting digested. It would just sit there and sit there and sit there for hours and hours, and then it will come right back up. And I'm not sure if y'all have ever thrown up on digested food. It is a very horrific, horrific, horrific way of throwing up. That's what I was dealing with. And um, I also could not... Well, I, I do also have IBS and a hypervisceral sensitivity. I have that. And um, so, and OA, I have oste osteoarthritis. Dr. Ben, did I forget anything? This is a long list. It's not easy to remember all of them. But um, I don't think I forgot anything. Oh, yes. Histamine intolerance. How dare I forgot that one. I also have histamine intolerance. Um, so my, um, my rheumatologist at the time just simply told me that, well, by the way, you know, uh, you're going to get worse and you are going to need surgeries. So when you need surgeries, just let me know in the meantime, here, just take Tylenol because you're going to hurt. You know, I was dealing with a lot of fatigue and, um, with my also digestive tract, I was not able to, forgive me, have normal bowel movement on my own without heavy 
heavy medications. So, I mean, I was really hit from every possible direction. I remember there was a time I thought I heard someone having some discussions about me. There was a, a, a discussion of, hey, maybe we should just have nutrients go through to you through your veins, not even the tubes, but through your vein, just to give your body a rest. Well, how long could they have fed me through my vein? <laughs> I'm not sure how many, how long a person can, you know, receive nutrients with their veins. Um, that's where I was. I was also about to have a grandbaby. And I'm not sure if that did it or what it was, but I kept feeling like um, there has to be, I have to do something. So then I started trying to talk to these, you know, uh, people, <laughs> um, different bunch of raw people, individuals, and that didn't work either until I finally uh, met Dr. Ben. And when we met, um, I seriously, um, when I tell you guys that I had to talk myself into getting off the couch, it's not a lie. I did. I had to because it, I was so out of energy that doing anything was very, very um, challenging for me. I, oh my God, I just didn't have any, any energy for anything. And, um, and then uh, in addition to all of that, I also um, had a severe food attachment issues. <laughs> Ever met anyone that has a food attachment issues? Well, I tend to think of like, I would be the queen of all of them. <laughs> um, I really, really had, um, yeah, that, that was my, you know, if I would be upset about something, just eat. If I would be, you know, um, mad about something, eat. If I would be happy about something, eat. For goodness sake, just eat. That, that's what I was. That's what I was dealing with. And then I met Dr. Ben and we started talking. I remember in one of our conversations um, when we were talking, I just, I just, when he was like asking me, so what would you like to do with your life? You know, I remember thinking, well, I just want to get off the couch without having to talk to myself. Can I just do that? You know, like I, I it was very hard for me to hope or to believe that I could heal. And finally, I signed up for the program on a basis that I, I told them I'm gonna do the program because I'm gonna go with your belief then, because I don't, have any, I don't have any hope that I could heal. I really had no hope. I mean, which part? What were we gonna heal? Uh, how was I gonna do that? So I, I signed up for the program because well, I don't know. He said, Dr. Ben said healing was possible. I was like, okay, so we'll go with that because you said healing was possible. As, I, as he and I worked together um, over the months <laughs> and, and, and all of that, I began noticing a difference. I began really seeing that while even my body with all of the complications that it had, it actually wants to live. It wants to heal, um, which was amazing because I didn't think it was possible. You know, um, Dr. Ben asked earlier, has anyone been over up with five medication? I, there was a time I thought I was a walking pharmacy, 12, easily. <laughs> um, oh, and did I tell you all I have fibromyalgia too? Yeah, and I have that one too. That's not in my head. It's in my body. So I have that. I think I did say that. Anyway, but as we started working together, one thing I learned very early on and very quickly, and that is that I had to be willing to go through emotional healing <laughs> because I, I tend to be an individual who builds my own fortresses to hide behind them, you know? Um, I have had a lot, a lot of trauma in my life, physical trauma, emotional trauma, you name it, I've had it. I have had at least seven or eight surgeries uh, to my best recollection. And all those surgeries, something was cut out. Can you imagine having your body cut out that many times? That's very painful. <laughs> One of the times though was a C-section. So that was, a, that was the most joyous, um, joyous surgery I ever had. <laughs> but the rest, they were going in there to cut something out. 
over and over and over. And um, it's not a wonder that my body cannot digest things. Anyways, so um, I just had a lot of traumas and everything. And I had done a good job hiding my traumas. But when we started working together, Dr. Ben was, he's like, you need to heal. And slowly but surely, he led me through. Oh, my goodness. We, I worked on um, areas I never thought I would face again. Um, I did. And as my heart, as my, as my emotions began to heal, then my body started responding to that healing, too. In case you want to know where I am today, <laughs> today is two years later. Yeah, I can keep up with my grandbaby. He's going to be two July the 9th. And um, <laughs> I can keep up with a young man just fine. Um, so that's really awesome. I have a lot of energy. My fatty liver um, is no longer in existence. It's doing just fine. Oh, yes. And the gallbladder. Yes, the gallbladder that had to come out as soon as possible it's doing just fine there's not a single damn stone in there they're gone my celiac is absolutely under control it's doing just fine um and um as far as my digestion and everything well i don't need to use horrendous pharmaceutical horrible medications just to go to the bathroom I go to the bathroom just okay. Every now and then I might need to use a prune juice, but there is a major difference between prune juice and all the other stuff pharmacy was having me take. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with that. As far as being able to digest food and everything, well, um, to the level my body is able to, I'm grateful um, that I, I have to still puree a lot of my food. But hey, pureeing the food uh, as opposed to being fed through IVs, there's a major difference. And I'm fine with that. I mean, this body has been through so much trauma. I'm totally okay with that. And as far as emotional healing, wow, <laughs> I'm a completely new person today than I was. As much as I kept fighting Dr. Ben about the emotional healing part. Um, but it was all worth it. I'm so glad he didn't give up on me. And he's trained me not to give up on people either uh, about the emotional healing. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to do. Ah, okay. So we talked about all that. I'll share my own healing story too. Because I think I left off with like, hey, I just started like making smoothies because it was like the only thing that wouldn't upset my stomach, but I, um, I noticed when I started doing it that I felt better. Right. And I was like, okay, this didn't hurt my stomach. Um, and then one day I was like, you know, I should look up recipes on the internet of like smoothies. Cause I was just taking whatever fruits and vegetables I had in the, the fridge at the time was throwing in a blender and some of them would taste good. Some of them taste horrible. Um, and so when I started looking up recipes on the internet, that's when I really stumbled into kind of like the rabbit hole of this thing called like eating raw foods. Like there was a thing that people did. They like really ate just all fruits and vegetables. And I was like, man, that's crazy. Um, but as I like, you know, just got more into it and I was doing it more and feeling better and like reading about it and watching videos about it, I was like, man, I, I got to keep going with this. And I noticed that um, in like, uh, I think it was like summer of 2011, I, uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it for 30 days, nothing but fruits and vegetables. And um, that was transformative. Uh, my chronic pain completely went away. My skin cleared up. My digestion got worlds better. I, brain fog lifted. I um, I like went from like chronically fatigued to like just like crazy abundant energy. And um, that was kind of like the start of the shift. Um, and I would say like, you know, uh, it was it was about six weeks into it that I was just like, man, my body is like completely, completely transformed. Like we're onto something. Like I actually saw my body heal itself from my own eyes, right? And I was just trying to make my stomach not hurt. Um, so that's my story. Um, I got someone else on here who's um who's who's got a pretty on his own wellness journey. 
that's got a lot to share. And um, I was part of it. And I and I know that he was dealing with a with a um, with a condition called ankylosing spondylitis. And and I'll let him share his story. But Craig, if you want, if you're here and you want to unmute yourself, we'd love to hear your story. Yeah, for sure, Doctor Ben. Thank you. Um, my story. Uh, first, I want to say um, thank you for sharing your story. From Cena, mine is relatively similar. I uh, started out when I was eight with skin issues that were unresolved. And uh, as I moved forward, I started stacking those issues. Um, I was very active. I was a college athlete, very health uh, oriented. And uh, as I moved into adult life, those traumas stack up and uh, my you know, my habits changed accordingly, right? I, I wasn't as healthy as I was in college. And uh, those same health issues that you made a list of before, uh, every single one of them is on my record. Um, and I went through the ringer with medications trying to solve it. And, uh, you know, I ended up with 14 medicines and uh, uh, all the, you know, the, the the mental challenges of that and the you know the life challenges ended me in a situation where uh, I went into my doctor for a regular uh, appointment. Maybe she was I was hoping for another pill, right? And uh, she said, "You sir are going to the emergency room." So I landed uh, in the on a, on a stretcher to the emergency room immediately, and uh, I was in the emergency room with heart failure, lung failure, and uh, you know fourteen medicines. Um, respirators it was a it was a real crash um they gave me a seven percent chance to live because it was such a complicated situation and i remember um on a regular basis like a daily basis so i was in the emergency room for about 30 days at that point and uh i remember every day uh a group of doctors coming in so not just one doctor that had my case but i was a case study enough and it was a teaching hospital that they were bringing you know 10 other doctors in every single day and having discussions with me as a teaching tool. And, uh, you know, at that point, imagine being 540 pounds and 14 medications. I was unable to walk. I was unable to move from the bed to the chair two feet away. I was unable to go to the bathroom. I was unable to put socks on. And uh, that was very dark. Uh, and, you know, um, I was on the verge of getting bariatric surgery. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's cut it out. So let's cut your stomach out because you can't, you know, control what you're putting in it. Right. And so I had a very important decision to make. And that's when I met Dr. Ben and, uh, in the two years, uh, a little over two years, uh, I have literally cut my weight in half and, uh, I have reduced my medicines from 14, uh, now to zero. I just literally about three weeks ago, uh, gave up my, um, my Humera. I went through that whole line of reasoning and a funny story in conclusion. Um, as I went to the doctor, I've obviously been in tight communication about, you know, what medicines and what my plan is here. And I, I recently, like I said, three weeks ago, went in, met with my rheumatologist and she sees my journey. She's been with me the whole time. Pats me on the back. I say, hey, here's where I'm at. Um, here's what I've done by, 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 you know, creating health, right? By, by, by changing my lifestyle. Uh, I, I really want to get off this last drug, Humira. Okay, cool. So we talk about it and she's real proud. Great, I'm eating right, I'm living right. But she could not let me leave that meeting without suggesting another prescription. And I, I, it, was, it, was, it was as if it was the, a Dr. Ben comedy Instagram reel. Like it was just too funny. Um, so yeah, that's my story. And uh, right now I'm back to being active. I uh, launch hot air balloons. I'm uh, able to spend time with my daughters on a regular basis. And I'm, I'm you know, walking seven miles a day and li living a very fulfilled life. But that journey from uh, that deathbed to now, uh, you know, has been, has been very quick and very dramatic. Uh, but it's only been because I've, 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 you know, chosen to create that health, right? Instead of fight that disease uh, very intentionally, uh, especially with the help of Dr. Ben. So 
Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Awesome story. All right. Um, so you're probably like, okay, what is this create health thing? Okay, well, what's he talking about? You know, maybe you know I got this book. That's what I decided to call it after me and the publisher fought about names for a book for like a month. It was finally like, let's just call it this, right? It was a it was one of those stupid, simple names. But creating health, right? Creating the optimal conditions for the body, eating fruits and vegetables, right? Like I think I got 20 years of formal education, but I think it was kindergarten where the teacher said fruits and vegetables are the healthiest foods, right? And like at 29 years old, like on the verge of being disabled, I'm like, you know, maybe she was onto something, right? Um, so give a sense of like what I'm eating. Like, what are we talking about? Right. Like, okay, here are some, here are some meals. Actually, I, funny enough, one of these I had this morning was a giant bowl of peaches, um, big green smoothies, fruits and greens, right. Big salads, um, just basically fruits and leafy green vegetables, the healthiest foods. Like I'm sure you've heard this before. Right. But like, think about what happens when you eat them in massive abundance, right. That is creating health, right. So you might want to screenshot this one. This one is the Dr. Ben protocol. And if you get my book, if you download any of my free guides, it's in here, right? This is not rocket surgery, right? But like, here's what you want to be doing. Breakfast, you want to be eating a whole bunch of high water fruit, right? They've got oranges there. They're really out of season now, but in the winter, you might be doing that. Today, it was peaches. Yesterday, it was watermelon. The other day, it was mangoes, right? I'm eating, there's a big bowl of fruit for breakfast and not like, you know, two oranges or two mangoes. I had, I had literally had, I think 11, 11 peaches today. Okay. So a lot, right? Like, do you want to create a lot of health? You got to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Drink a giant green smoothie, whole Vitamix filled, 64 ounces, two liters, 10 bananas in mine the other day with some, with some uh, organic spinach and some organic strawberries. Okay. Water is the base. Uh, dinner, more fruit, big leafy green salad. You had meditation every day, you get exercise in several times a week, you get sleep. That's the formula. Like, that's it, guys. Like, it's not it's not rocket surgery. This is literally eat fruits and vegetables, but also to the exclusion of other foods, right? So now I'm sure I get several questions on this, get several, like, things people say when they see this. So screenshot this if you haven't already. There'll be a recording, but, you know, you may want this information because if you apply it, if you take what's here and you apply it, you will see amazing changes in your health, right, over time, right? Not, not overnight, right? Like Craig didn't lose half, you know, go from 550 pounds to half of that overnight. It's, it was a two-year process, right? And he's still got a ways to go. Um, but anyway, okay. You know, why is it, why so much fruits and vegetables, Dr. Ben? Well, here is that fruits and vegetables have the most amount of nutrition and the least amount of calories, right? Like fruits and vegetables are very low calorie, but high nutrition, high vitamins, high minerals, phytonutrients, fiber, like all the nutrients that best match human nutrition needs are in fruits and vegetables in high amounts, right? They're the most anti-inflammatory foods in the planet. They leave the, behind the least amount of residue and metabolic waste, least amount of crap for your body to clean up and get rid of. They digest and assimilate the easiest. And fruit has slow burning natural sugar for best energy, right? People always tell me like, okay, you know, isn't that too much sugar? Right? We'll get to that, right? People say, okay, well, Dr. Ben, you know, there's no protein in this. How do you, how, how are you able to do muscle ups? How are you able to do one arm push ups? You're just eating fruits and vegetables. Um, here's the thing all fruits and vegetables have protein, it's about 10% of calories from, from um, protein versus a standard American diet, 16, right? So it's got 60% more protein. But here's the thing excess protein is actually inflammatory. Most people are eating it in excess. I had someone with type two diabetes call me last week and was like, you know, I'm doing the CDC program on type two diabetes and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not getting any better. Right. And then I'm talking about fruits and vegetables with her. She's like, well, what about protein? Don't I need that for type two diabetes? I'm like, aren't you doing it now? Aren't you doing the CDC program? And they eat a ton of protein. Yeah. Was well, your diabetes going away? No. Okay. Well, you know, think about that. Right. But we have this protein obsessed society that says more is better and there's no upper limit. Well, the fact is that there's an amount you need. But then over that, you start just making more work for your kidneys. Body can't even do anything with it. And there's no known disease other than starvation that's caused by a protein deficiency, right? Like y'all are, you know, worried about uh, rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis and like, oh my God, I don't know what the disease is if I don't get enough protein because I never heard of it or met anybody who has it. But I don't want to do that, right? I don't do that because that would, that would be worse than you know, suffering endlessly being on five different medications. Um, oh, the too much sugar. It doesn't have 
doesn't the fruit have too much sugar, Dr. Ben, right? Like you see me eating the whole watermelon on Instagram. <laughs> and then I, you know, I go into a blood sugar coma after that. No, right? Because sugar packaged in whole fruit affects the body completely differently than refined sugar and candy and soda pop and cupcakes and, you know, breakfast cereals and stuff like that, right? Fiber in the fruit slows the absorption into the bloodstream. So there's never a sugar spike. Like if you tested my hemoglobin A1C, it's great. If you tested my fasting blood sugar, it's never in the triple digits. Okay. And, and even after a meal, I tested it after a meal. And it like I ate, a, I ate, um, I ate seven mangoes one time, tested after blood sugar was 94, right? Normal range is 60 to 100. Totally normal. Um, how many diabetic people do you know that are eating like, you know, four pineapples a day? None of them. They're eating junk food, right? They're worried about, oh, I can't eat fruit. I'm diabetic. If fruit made you fat and diabetic, I would be where Craig was two years ago, 400 plus pounds with a fasting blood sugar, 400 plus, but I'm not, okay? Fruits and vegetables are health food and there's no upper limit. There's no such thing as eating too much fruit because if you could have, I would have 53 bananas in a day one time, okay? If, there, if, if you could die from that, I would be very dead, okay? Um, so- I know this is crazy stuff, right? This is like flies in the face of a lot of a lot of um, you know conventional wisdom, right? But here's the thing: you got to to be able to heal the system that exists isn't working. You got to be a renegade, right? And Rage Against the Machine, yeah, maybe they sold out in the past few years, but you know they had this song called Renegades. Renegades are people with their own philosophy. They change the course of history. Everyday people like you and me. So, are you willing to be do what other people aren't willing to do to get results, other people aren't willing to get, right? And so who's a renegade? The person who massively overhauls their diet and lifestyle, does what they know is right, even when other people may not agree with them, criticize them, whatever, marginalize them. Um, <laughs> I was no stranger to this. So when COVID hit and I wasn't wearing a face diaper or shooting up science juice, you know, I, I was used to being ostracized for making crazy health decisions to eat a bunch of fruits and vegetables. Um, makes big changes in their life and their habits, not just, you know, eats another Clementine with their ham sandwich, but like makes big changes, right? Stops caring about what other people think, what, even if it's like their, their family members, their coworkers or whatever, lives life on their terms in order to get vibrantly well and is proud to be a renegade and doesn't follow the crowd. And the reward for that is you achieve a level of health, vitality, and happiness most people don't ever experience in their lifetime. So if you want to get out of pain, get your energy back, regain control of your body instead of it controlling you, no longer feel like an outcast homebody, feel like being social again, show up for your friends, family, partner, kids, job, hobbies, passions, 100%. This is my offer to you, okay? If you're the kind of person that, you know, you want to make changes in your life, but you get discouraged easily, get distracted easily, tend to procrastinate kind of self-sabotage, like you try to eat the healthy food, but then you go back to the junk and you're like, why did I do that, right? You have trouble sticking to things. You need somebody to push you. You need a like-minded tribe of people going through the same stuff. Okay, listen up. All right, so this is the offer for tonight, all right? The Create Health Academy. If you were to go buy this course on my website, it would cost $1,000, okay? Uh, it has all my recipes, all my meal plans, what to shop for at the grocery store, a bunch of stuff on the emotional healing that Ram Cena was talking about, a bunch of instructional videos there, a bunch of instructional recipe videos. Like it's a comprehensive course, right? Like I was I was actually talking to someone the other day who bought it and she was like, wow, this is like more than I could have imagined. Like this is like super thorough. Um, and so for you guys, bring the price down for people who signed up for the workshop tonight, bring the price down to 250. Okay. Also bonusing in a one hour call. With me and Ram Cena, we'll, we'll put together a plan for you. I call this a recovery roadmap call. So um, if this is something you're interested in, I'm going to put a link in the chat here. I wish there were a way to um, pin that. But um, that is that. Is that. Um, so look, if this is something that you're like, hey, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm you know, ready to do this, make changes, heal myself. Um, you know, this, this is, this is the best thing I can offer. Like this is basically everything laid out for you. Okay. So take all the guesswork out of it in this, in this course. And you'll get this, you know, on this call, you get support from us with like, you know, putting together a plan for you to heal. Okay.
So if you're interested in that, if you have questions on it, you can you can type them in the chat. Um, you can shoot if you don't want to ask it publicly. You can I think you could send me a DM on Zoom as well, and just like send it to me, and I'll answer it for everybody. Um, and then now we'll just get to Q and A. So um, I'm going to go through the chat here and um, just see. Um, let's see. Um, can I pin myself. Oh, okay, there I am. All right. So. I didn't get the chance to read through the comments, but you can start commenting in the chat and I'll start responding to questions. Um, let's see. All right. Okay. Oh, someone asked me if I've been to Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Yeah, I grew up in Massachusetts, but on the other end of the turnpike towards Boston. Um, let's see. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm just reading through all these comments now. I apologize, guys. Okay. Okay. Someone says, I'm afraid of fruit because I'm pre diabetic. I hope I answered your question on that. Um, the more fruit you eat, the less diabetes you're going to have straight up. And I'm not talking about like Hawaiian punch fruit juice. I'm talking real fruit that grows that you pick off of a tree or you find in the grocery store in the produce aisle, not gummy worms. And you know, you know that I'm just saying that, um, yeah, someone says this is protocol vegan. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, vegan is vegan's an ethical decision, but it's all plants. It's all fruits and vegetables. Move all processed foods. Yep. Anything that has a shelf life. Anything that has a shelf life, right? Because if the food can't go bad, right? Like a Twinkie, it takes 70 years to go bad. I got news for you. It's because the food already is bad. Like if your food doesn't rot, if you leave it out too long, it ain't food, all right? All right. Is it okay for breastfeeding and pregnancy? Absolutely, right? Like what do we feed? What do we feed infants? The first thing we feed them is breast milk. And then we say, hey, when they get to six months, maybe you can start adding in fruit, right? That's like literally the first food we feed kids. And then like vegetables a little later and then other things later. But like the first fruit they recommend feeding kids after breast milk is fruit. Recipes for smoothies and juicing. Um, you know, uh, my book uh, has a bunch of that. I've got, uh, there's also like a green smoothie guide that comes with it. Um, someone says organic or not. Do you have a preference? Yeah, I definitely prefer organic. Um, but I've had people literally work with me who can't get access to a single organic fruit and vegetable and still heal on so-called conventional produce. So is it preferred? Absolutely. Is it necessary? Absolutely not, right? Like I'd rather you eat um, non-organic fruits and vegetables than like organic crackers or like organic bacon or like organic, you know, cereal, right? Like, okay, cool story, bro, that your processed food is organic, but like if it's still, you know, still a processed food. Um, okay. How long do you have to do it for? Do you have to keep doing it to stay symptom free? Yeah, pretty much you do. Like if, 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 if I slip up, you know, my symptoms come back and I learned that lesson enough times that I just don't do it anymore, right? Um, so how long do you have to do it for to heal? It varies, but you know, weeks to months usually. Um, if you got something really complex, it can take, you know, longer. Um, but if you're consistent with it, it's a matter of months usually. And then of course, if you fall off it, it starts to come back. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Ted says, Hey, I'm happy about all the currently I've seen the fatty liver arthritis and I'm overweight. That's all the stuff that Ramsina overcame. Um, someone says, um, Oh, someone says, I'm mostly healed from getting psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis three weeks after a second vaccine, June 2021. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you're getting better with diet changes. That's awesome. Craig says, if I can't pronounce it, I don't eat it. Awesome. How do you deal with the cravings for the junk foods? Fantastic question. Um, there's lots of that's that's a great question. Um, someone says they go away after you start eating clean, your cortisol levels adjust, eliminating cravings. Um, Craig says you make a decision to love yourself and create health. And um, and uh, that's great too. Basically, you got to get to a point where the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of changing, right? 
Like, yeah, you're gonna have crazies and make mistakes. Yeah, of course, right? But it's like, you gotta, your vision's gotta be powerful enough that healing is just, is, is, is more enticing than being sick, okay? Um, but yeah, cravings, it's a normal thing, right? Like if it's something you really struggle with, you can, you know, reach out to us. We can talk about like coaching and support to help you through that, right? Because that's a totally normal thing. Um, and the longer you do this, the less cravings you have because your body gets used to the healthy food. Um, Ramsina, did you want to say anything about cravings? Okay, someone says. Okay, yes. Yeah. Would you like me to respond to that? Sorry. Sure. Yeah, if you want to just give the your twenty second spiel on that. Twenty second. We'll see. Okay. It has been my experience that, and in my own life, and the life of others, because I now work with Dr. Ben. Um. That. Sorry. There, yes, there is a physiological reason for craving. I get that, but there is also emotional reasons. And craving is another cry for healing. And here, what we do, we deal with it. We go behind the reasons for craving, and we assist everyone to overcome it. And that's what we do. So, yeah, cravings do happen, but we have ways to help with that and uh please remember that there's a reason behind your craving and until you figure out what it is it usually coming. has nothing to do with the actual food never <laughs> usually there's just some emotion you're avoiding you don't want to feel and the pizza helps you numb it out exactly yeah, yeah. yes uh mm -hmm. let's see um someone says hey do you allow grains at all um, they're not optimal for healing. They're all right, you know, if they're like whole and organic, but you know, they're like kind of yellow light foods. Um, is it strictly veggies? No, it's mostly fruit and veggies. People say, is it all that? Like, no, 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 fruit, like a lot of fruit, like 11 peaches for breakfast, like 10 bananas for lunch, a lot of fruit and veggies. You have a little meat, you can add the amount of meat to the degree that you don't want to heal, right? So if you don't want to get like, you know, this is what's optimal. You go up, leave this call and do whatever you want out there. I'm not telling anybody like how to live their life, but I'm just saying, if you want to heal from disease, this is what you got to do. Take it or leave it. Like I'm, uh, if you don't like this, I, I'm not offended, right? This is for the people that want to get better, right? So if you're like, Hey, can I have a little bit of this? How bad can I eat and still get results? Like if that's your mindset, it's gonna be hard to heal, right? Like if, if it's literally like, Hey, Hey Ben, how much can I get away with, with like eating crap? Um, the answer is not much. And really the answer is that people who ask that question tend to have a really hard time healing. Uh, someone says, what is your bathroom schedule experience in this diet frequently? Um, yeah, it's, you think, okay, I must be eating all this fruit, but I must be pooping all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's two to three times a day and it's not like it's out of control and I can't, like, it's very under control. If the process takes like, you know, literally less than 10 seconds, like, you know, eat a lot of fiber. It just, you sit, it comes out and you're done. Like it's, 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 so it may be more frequent, but it's under control. And it's like, it happens so fast. It's not like, okay, you know, standard American diet, I'm pooping every other day and it's a 20 minute process. No, no it's like I'm pooping a few times a day and it's, and it's under a minute process. Um, holiday parties, out to eat, stuff like that. You bring your own and you don't eat what's there. And if they give you a hard time, you say, hey, this crazy Dr. Ben guy's got me on this diet because I got diseases X, Y, and Z, BYO, right? And bring more than enough, right? Because uh, people are gonna wanna try what you got and maybe you end up being hungrier than you thought. And if you eat more than enough and also eat before you go as well, just like, you know, hedge your bets, right? Don't show up and hope to hell they got mangoes because they probably don't, okay? Um, what if... But your body doesn't heal itself after a while. What is what are the symptoms come back? I'm not sure of this question, sure. but like your body, your body, your body. I don't know who's on um, I don't know who's on uh, echo, but like your body heals to the degree that you provide the conditions to heal. Remember, we got to create health, right? So if you're you're the you're creating health or creating disease. So if you start eating the foods that create disease again, you're gonna get disease. It's not like you do this for a while and then you're healed, disease goes away, and then you go back to eat Pizza Hut 
um, because you're healed. Like it doesn't work that way. But I think you'll find that being healthy and healed is really nice. It's awesome. And you just keep getting better and better. And you don't want to go back, right? It's some degree, you have cravings now and then, but you're like, damn, this feels like, like people think, oh, Dr. Ben, you have so much discipline. They don't eat like, you know, Pizza Hut. It's like, dude, I, that would be making me feel like death. Like, there's no way, no way you could get me to eat that. Um, it's, I don't do it out of discipline. It's like, I've, I've gotten to such a great level of health and I feel so good doing what I'm doing. I don't crave this stuff anymore. Like I literally don't, it's not even just doesn't come up on the radar. I enjoy doing what I'm doing. Um, okay. So how do you, okay. So I hope we addressed the, um, the junk food thing. Um, someone says, do you know how to help people detox from the COVID jabs? Um, and the answer is yes. This works for autoimmune disease and it works for the COVID jabs. We've worked with some people who've had crazy autoimmune reactions, like things that I've never seen in my career from that stuff, and they've been able to heal. So um, the body detoxifies itself, right? When you provide it the optimal conditions to heal, it can begin to expunge anything, even if it's you know, mRNA, hydrogel, graphene, lipid nanoparticle, all that stuff. The body has the capability. And you know, in the beginning, I was like, man, maybe this technology is too good. Maybe the body can't detox it. Nope. <laughs> nope. We gave it a shot and people did. People did. So um, yes, absolutely. The body can detoxify from, from the COVID jabs. I mean, it's not easy. It's a process, right? But um, yes, can. Given the fruits and vegetables, right? It can do it. Okay. Uh, what about bioengineered canned fruits and veggies? Um, you know, um, not optimal, but like we'll still work. Canned, also not optimal, right? Like if it's like more of these questions of like how kind of not so great can I do this and get results? Well, you know, not so great. Um, can't fit that much fruit in my stomach. Great question, right? Like the fruit, the stomach is a muscle, right? So um, like the body's ability, the muscle can get strong, it can get tense, and it can also stretch, right? And so your muscle is, a, your stomach is a muscle and it works by like squeezing food to get it to mush up, right? And then your intestines do the same thing, squeeze it along. And so the, the stomach can contract, but it can also expand, okay? And just like a muscle, you can stretch it out. The average stomach holds one liter, right? Like a quarter of a gallon. But over time, you, you, you like eat bigger and bigger meals and it begins to stretch more. I used to be roommates back like 18 years ago with a dude who was like the, the 40th best competitive eater in the world. And he could stretch his stomach out to five liters eating like a bunch of crazy stuff. Like he would freeze Tootsie Rolls and eat them uh, just to make his jaw stronger. But anyway, I can stretch my stomach to about two and a half liters. Okay. Um, but that took time. That was a process that took time of like, you know, eating as much as I could in a sitting, maybe having a few more bites and then leaving it alone. Um, and so in the beginning doing this, you may need to break the food up into five, six meals a day, right? Cause you can't fit your, and so you eat a bunch, you feel good, you feel full an hour later, I'm hungry again, right? Cause the food digests lickety split, right? And then you just, you just eat more and then you're full and you, you rinse and repeat several times a day. Um, what about beans and lentils? Um, again, like tier two, yellow light stuff, not the best. Um, but like, can you heal on it? Maybe, you know, but it's a lot better than like, um, you know, processed foods, animal products. Yeah. Okay. What about people who have an oxalate issue in plant foods? Okay. So this is something that the carnivore people are telling the oxalates, the oxalates, the oxalates. Um, the oxalates are a symptom of a greater problem. It's not the oxalates in food. Like when you have kidney stones that have oxalates in it, oxalates are something your body uses to, to sequester and expunge toxic things. The oxalates bind to the toxins that are already there. And, and then, and then usually the body can expel them unless they're in excess. And then the oxalates stick around with bound to the toxins. And then people go, Oh, there's too many oxalates, right? Um, no, no oxalates, you know, and, and so now it's a new thing. You can sell you oxalate supplements, right? And like oxalates are the problem. The, the oxalates aren't the problem. I've been helping people heal on fruits and vegetables for over a decade, long before people started barking about the oxalates. Okay. Um, okay. The, okay. Someone says the jab, the DNA, like if the jab changes your DNA, 
you can't heal from it. Here's the amazing fact is that it's already been studied that fasting, the body can make DNA repairs when you're fasting. So the body can heal from DNA damage too, as long as you give it the right conditions. Okay, so if you think you're an mRNA mutant, no, body can still heal. Okay, do you practice fasting while eating this? You know, typically no, I can. Um, some people need to do like Ramsin has done some coconut water fasts. Ramsin, I think you've even done some like broth fasts. And Craig, you've, you've done some too. Um, if you guys want to comment on that. Um, nuts and seeds, absolutely. About a handful of nuts and seeds a day. Um, let's see. Um, if sourcing organic fruit and veg is difficult, will frozen suffice, especially for smoothies? Absolutely. Freaking lootly. Um, in fact, most frozen fruit is picked at the peak of ripeness and then frozen. So rock on, use the frozen fruit. If that's what you can get. Um, okay. Okay. This, someone says this may, um, they, this may fit into how much you can get by category, but address alcohol such as wine. Okay. This is a fantastic question. Um, because I never intended to quit drinking. I never intended to quit drinking. Um, but I remember uh, back when I said, hey, I tried it for 30 days. Um, I think it was like day 22, I went out with some friends and got a drink. And I was like, ah, just it's just alcohol. I'll be fine. I literally got a headache within 60 seconds of having the drink. Like I literally got hangover symptoms before the buzz kicked in. And and Craig, you experienced something like this too, right? That you like had a drink while you were fasting and you like immediately had like hangover symptoms. Yeah, it was about uh, it was about a week ago. So I was 14 days into a broth fast and you know my system is clean and I you know felt proud of myself. So hey, let's have a drink. Wrong move. What happened? Uh I was more intoxicated than if I had three or four drinks. And then it was like an instant hangover, like before I even, like the hangover kind of came before. <laughs> it, it, was, it was it was just a mess. And it was all day the next day for what, what, literally one whiskey. Yeah. So what happens is that when your body gets really healthy, your system gets really cleaned out, the alcohol hits you like in a totally different way. Like it basically ruins it. It's like when they give the... um when they give the, the heroin addicts the thing that makes them not responsive to the heroin and they're like, I can't, I, I can't, like, it doesn't even do anything. Right. Like it's similar to that. Like your body just is like, Whoa, what the heck was that? Don't do that to me. I feel horrible. Right. And so I never intended to quit drinking, but like the cleaner my system got, my body just could not alcohol was like completely ruined me. Like I, yeah, even one drink would just be like, it would make me feel so horrible before the alcohol, before the, even the good effects of the alcohol kicked in, like immediately, bam. So had to, had to quit drinking just kind of by default. So uh, <laughs> someone says, oh, how the heck did I mute myself? Um, did you guys hear that? Okay. So someone said, I saw you ate 12 peaches. How do we know our portion? You start when you're hungry and you finish when you're full. That's it, right? It's not rocket surgery, right? Like the human body knows what it's doing, right? Now you eat Big Macs, the body doesn't know that those are super calorie dense, right? So it's just like, oh, this tastes good, right? And just, oh, 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 right? But with fruits and vegetables, your body knows like it's normal signals of when you're hungry, when you're full are, are keyed in exactly, okay? Someone says um, coffee or tea, um, you know, uh, I had, a, I, had a, I had a terrible energy drink addiction. I had to get hypnotherapy to, to get off the caffeine. Um, so it's going to hinder the process, right? If you can do like herbal tea, it doesn't have caffeine in it. That's good. But the caffeine is, a, it's a nervous system stimulant. It shocks the body into producing adrenaline, right? It's not, not it's, it's essentially toxic. I know people hate to hear that, but, you know, for the people that really want to heal, that's, that's what you need to know, right? Um, and this is the, this is not for everybody, right? Like there, there's some of you who are like, you know what? Sounds cool, but I'd rather just stay sick. You know, it sounds like a lot of work. And I get that. That's, that's no harm. I put the information out for you. Um, I'll put the link. You guys all got an email with the link. So if it's something you want to sign up for, um, you know, it's in the email. I'm putting in the chat again. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, we're at 725. I'll answer questions for another five minutes or so here. Um, and then, you know, if you have more questions you don't want to ask here or things come up to you, you can reply to, you know, one of my emails, send me a DM on Instagram. I'm happy to, um, uh, you know, happy to answer any questions. This is a, pro a good process to consider, even if um, you are without disease. Yeah, absolutely. Although most people are healthy, kind of, they didn't get there by accident. So, um, okay. Someone says, can you share about more about the content in the course? So recipes, meal plans, what to shop for at the grocery store, instructional videos, how to make it. Okay. Instructional videos on the emotional healing portion, breath work exercises, meditations, tapping, emotional freedom technique. Okay. Uh, it's basically a primer that like, basically if you got the course, and you just went through it and did everything in it consistently, you would heal. So um, I hope that answers the question. Um, but I really just made it like a comprehensive thing of just like all the information you could need and try to make it in the most like way that makes the most sense. Uh, let's see, someone, okay. When eating fruit, does it have to be 20 fruits at the same time? No, right? Um, you can eat five different fruits in a meal if you want, for sure. But generally, you're going to find it digests the best, it assimilates the best, and it tastes the best if you do one at a time. But by all means, like today, I had peaches and I had a papaya as well. I was hungry. Um, so it doesn't, you know, um, but I think for healing, keeping the meals as simple as possible, as few ingredients as possible, means the body has to do less work, right? But by all means, mix and match, have fun. But as you'll find, you do this more, you want simplicity. Um, let's see. Someone says, um, was there a different set of fruits that you used to help the man heal, heal from the jabs, right? Like, okay, there's autoimmune disease and you heal with these fruits and then there's the jab autoimmune disease and you heal with the... No, it was the same stuff. It was the same stuff, okay? And the guy did it in two different countries, actually. Because he was from India and his daughter found my book and was like, we got to heal you, dad. Flew him out to Australia where she lived and then did the diet there. And then that kind of got him going. And then they, when they sent him back to India, they sent him with like a box of fruit on the plane. And then he had to keep doing it in India. Obviously, India is a place, you know, it's like great access to produce. Um, but no, it was because remember, remember, guys, it's about creating health. The fruits and the vegetables don't actually heal you. Okay, I know that's maybe I haven't said that yet, but the body heals the body. You're just providing it the optimal conditions to do so. The fruit has no healing properties per se, just as the bandage that covers your hand has no healing properties. You're just giving the body the optimal conditions to do what it's been able to do since the dawn of time, which is heal itself, regulate itself, grow itself, and uh, organize itself. Okay. Um, Okay, Ted, yeah, Ted, you got, you know me, man. Just just hit me up, dude. I think you even got my cell number. So, you know, I mean, like, here's the thing. Like, you know, it, pain and disease come in three forms, right? Like, it, it tickles you with the feather. Hey, you're not feeling so good. It whacks you with the two by four, right? And like, you know, it's like, okay, I got, you know, it hurts here and he, and not here, not here, not here, but right here. Like, is there, is there a mark? Oh yeah. Okay. The two by four days, or you get run over by the Mack truck. Right. And so maybe you're getting whacked by the two by four. And it's like, am I ready to make a change? Do I need to get hit by the Mack truck? Do I need to get the cancer diagnosis before I'm like, Whoa, I need to change. Um, okay. So we're almost at seven 30 here. Um, that's Pacific time. Um, yeah, Charles, thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah. So any more questions or I'm going to close it out for the night. And there'll be a replay. I'm going to process it. Mushrooms. Um, yeah, mushrooms. Yeah, I didn't say fungus, right? Uh, mushrooms are awesome. I had mushrooms the other night. They were fantastic. Um, someone says, do I take any supplements? Um, I take vitamin B12. That's it. I used to take vitamin D for a while. My levels were low. Um, but, uh, you know, um, I, I think those are the only thing. I'm not a big supplement guy. Like the body heals itself. You don't like... If you have a deficiency, try to get it from food. And if you can't, supplement it. Um, canned fruit is okay. Is that, um, yeah, I mean, it's better than, than, um, than uh, 
than a lot of things out there, right? Um, you know, fresh is best, frozen, freeze dried, canned is kind of iffy, but it's um, yeah, you do what you can, right? Oh man, I didn't even mean to be that to be a pun. Uh, cooked veggies, if you're steaming them or baking them, it's a lot better than frying them. Um, so yeah, I mean, cooked veggies, uh, raw veggies is best, but if you got to cook them, steam them or, fry, or, or steam them or bake them, don't fry them. Um, yeah, remember that canned items are pasteurized, killing most of the nutrients. Okay, frozen preserves most of the nutrients. Heat has an effect on food, unfortunately, that's not good. Will this heal the gut too? Absolutely. The body will heal everything. I and mean, this, I had terrible digestive issues. Ramsin had terrible digestive issues, and we were able to heal our digestion. So, absolutely, we'll heal the gut. Someone says, farm fresh eggs. Eggs are one of the most inflammatory foods on the planet. Okay, well, we'll wrap it up for tonight. Uh, you'll get an email tomorrow morning with the replay. Thanks, everybody, for coming.